result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. You've heard some of them. I catch base and thrills me. And I uh, like that's, okay. ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about it. What that. doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on, because that's what I do for a living, the documentation. <coughs> because, again, I'm, I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw up my job and I'll send money at this. But if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have the training, and people and retrain yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have a problem again and again. And I'd like to take the time to, to show you something that's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago, and I want to show you my legs. Once I started taking showers in the well system off the Wipanuchi River. That's my life. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Wipanuchi today. And before I moved to where I am today, I lived four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Jean, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, and lives on 44. He's on a fixed income, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now, that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed income in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Wipaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Parvin, if I may. Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light and found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th, 6th January, the 6th of January at the uh, Valosta Highway, um, I don't know, Madison Valosta Highway 31 and 445, um, had an extremely high level of coliform in the coli. And and as today's results came back, uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, this year's local space for emergencies. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again and uh, in the next few days but we've had this will be our third health advisory of this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued to Florida on the Rift Future River. <coughs> I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah the health the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with, but this isn't that way. It's coming in slow and, and you know, so for almost a month now uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th the DEP data <coughs> was for E. coli 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters, and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, is that right? 400. And 800 for E. coli. And uh, to 
today at 150, the results was 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of, <coughs> about a third of one that we've got one at six. So we're, we're concerned about with this, the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's just very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may even be trapped in some of the, the low-lying areas or slews in the along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I had I live two miles from the river, State River City, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night. And I'm thinking that the city of Isle Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and the Florida Park Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're going to go into another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issued tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels of but then my concern is, I don't need to drag this out, is what's behind it. You know, uh, this, this may be a long-term event for us, and, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And, uh, We've got a lot of it. We've invested a lot, of it. and I'll just put it out there and flat that we would hopefully we would expect to see about Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we had to incur to uh, monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask, and uh, we'll go from there. About the personal costs, people who have to buy water because they can't drink water in the river. <coughs> Compensation for that at all? Anything in plan? I just, I can't just kind of just going right to the school when we can in Jericho and on the other side of the building for a while. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to explain who the contractors are and how they got the money. Could you please explain who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe or whatever, where apparently a lot of them, it's more serious. <coughs> came out of wherever it came out of. Explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it. Because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Yeah, we're we engaged with, with a uh, technology <coughs> contractor from uh, <coughs> Late last year, mid last year, to work on our credit system. The name of the company is EMC, and uh, they've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should talk to this, but uh, we're the, looking at the uh, <coughs> in uh, Alabama. Trust the deal out of And the reason no one noticed the mammals, trust it's in the woods. It's probably quarter mile, half mile, half mile off. Uh, if you uh, if you're from Dot Austin, you probably know where the like, Depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. So if you go back in there a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the manhole is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek. And then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek, so that manhole right there, uh, before it goes across the creek, is where the top came off the manhole. You know, the manhole lid, and that's where it, that's where it came out. So, well, all the stuff right? just came out of one manhole. That's the one manhole. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, 
I just want to make a statement. I mean, I've been sitting here listening to this, and I think some of the reasons you guys know I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take up your own time. <coughs> you know, you talk about communication, you're talking about you know, getting the word out and things going on here. Rick will have the last thing to uh, go for a point of view. I know you guys, Mr. Mayor and Council, because you all take it on the chin. I feel like you do. You're not taking it harder than any of us. We hear it from a lot of our constituents. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. There was a spill in the woods, a heavily wooded area, behind target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Any more way, anything as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email what, 12 hours before we get to the place, like 21 hours. So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, I mean, yes, it's a bad spill, but I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I've been told. And that wasn't the case. Um, you know, like another word, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out. So from what I'm hearing from you, know, you guys and uh, people here in the audience tonight, they just want to count and go. You know, you guys send me out to work on a manhole, and you send me out to work on a pole, and one I think you have a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there to answer for these mistakes that you made. And I'm not picking on you guys, I'm not here to show out or anything, I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are, this is the reality of it. Uh, it's time for something to be done. Accountability. I know you guys invest a lot of money into this thing. Uh, so I can probably just for you guys, for you guys sitting next to me, I don't hear as much as I do. And, and it's just, it's never been, I think, in one time. So. I've had 30 years, 32 years in the business, so I'm doing the same thing. Pick it up and try to hold them accountable for what I do for a living. You know, four radio stations. I followed this since up nine in the flood and then crumbled the <coughs> infrastructure. Um, to this point today, <laughs> being kept informed all along the way, being one of the people on the release, and being one of the city's official release, my demand. Um, I couldn't be more impressed with the effort and I just went through this transition over the last two and a half weeks. Department head meetings with every single person. And every single one right now, the personnel will tell you that I asked this question. Can I walk this earth? Can I walk into that meeting and assure these people that we're doing everything we can possibly do? Now, I have suggested as we get these new updated meter reading, electronic meter readers, that we don't need people to walk the streets anymore, that I want them to walk the 125 crossings we have over waterways with our sewer system, that I want them to put eyes on it as well. That I didn't want this job if we didn't pass FLOSS and I couldn't commit $40 million to the further improvements on the system because I need to come up with $40 million over the next four years to keep our promise to you guys and the aggressive timeline that we're on and repairs of this. That uh, I can't release them a little bit. I do that for a um, We get parking trouble a little. We kind of done a little before we got approval because we wanted to start that process. And now we officially have an approval and that 10 million gallon catch basin will assure us that, uh, that nothing. We're two miles from the river now and that catch basin will assure us nothing that's near that river at the treatment plant on the rock manuals. We continue to rehab on those for, for probably the next decade. You know that. You know how many there are, you know what we're doing. Additional signage is a great idea as well, John. But, um, you want me to hop off the bridge, I'll just leave one well, of them. I know, but I want you to come back to us all that have decontaminated wells when this event is over and say that the city of Del Doxon is going to support the effort to reimburse us for the well decontamination. I own four wells, but these folks all live where I am, and they're all going to have to have wells that need decontaminated. It's not a trivial process. Yeah. That slide had wanted to address a few minutes ago to expound a little on what Ms. Davis had said. We refer to ourselves in Madison County probably <coughs> as fiscally constrained, but in reality we are poor. Right. That is, we are poor, and you know that. 
uh, our residents, most of them, don't have the money to pay for the water filtration systems. We had people today who spoke in Madison. They paid anywhere from 45 to 6,000 and above just to get the initial system. That doesn't include replacing the different parts that have to be replaced yearly or however often they would need to. When you start talking about buying water and uh, it's costing our county right now several thousand just to do the testing for the people because of course we're doing it for free. So for them, because they shouldn't have to pay for it. But when you look at all the different areas that the people have to try to cover to make sure that they're not using contaminated water, a lot of them don't have the money for it and because of that truthfully, a lot of them who have lived close to the river for many, many years, they don't bother. And we don't know what they may at times deal with as a result of the water, but they know they don't have the money. They've always been there or they've been there for a number of years and they, they say another spill and they just don't bother. But the bottom line, and I think with most things, bottom line just comes down to money and it hits a lot of our residents very hard along that area. I have a question. I have a question. As far as accountability goes, when these bills happen, are you, is, is anybody fined? I mean, it seems like, is there anything, like you just built X amount of raw sewage, does the EPA fine the city? Is there any kind of... The EPA, EPB can fine the city. But that is not like... Automatic. It's not, it's not automatic, automatic or is it based on the gallon or whatever it is, but they, they do have that authority to... Have they? Uh, have, they ever? have they ever? I've been here, I've been city manager two years. Um, since I've been here two years, no, that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. We're before 09 has been happening, so. We're, we're, under, we're under the similar, uh, still from the with, with uh, EPD. Uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think we've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times, rather than a dollar value, they'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my, oh yeah, we have one place in North Kitchener, my last playing around the water, we kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water, get the truck, I'll have a text from a local official, Stay out of the river. The spill had happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing in my lab and having a good time on the Kitchen River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access on the river, know about your spills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, animals are in that water, farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I don't think I have an answer to that. You yeah. <coughs> Anybody on that email list can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification. You get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously, you don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had but one person in the campground to get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no <coughs> internet. So we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do. You know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a poor county. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their advice. Mr. Parker, does anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far of the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Right, so we have a code red system in Madison County in our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad yeah. to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. Y'all are relying a lot on the uh, systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in, their, in the event of a catastrophic 
electrical outlets, they all are on um, battery or generator. Generators that would be cheaper purchase more and more generators for backup to that. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but all right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well well pumps for overflow of the sewage? They do use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, not wild allowed statement. Us to do it. Yeah, we only allow it to be surface discharge. I know down out in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros and cons, some folks are pro to that, some folks don't think they, uh, that should be happening either, so, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's the right. soil condition. Yeah, well, so they use a the bubble system in South Florida. Yep. They inject it into the uh, brackish water They're system. going into the lower, lower Florida, I don't know yeah, if you can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. You get up higher in the sugar, it'd be hard to get those. Well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84 which I believe we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone about us know how many river miles from US 84 to the state line? Uh, 27, or about three days. And is anybody measuring at the intermediate boat ramps to see how the sewage is moving down the river? Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. As you know. <coughs> Did you do it at Knight's Ferry in Maine? We haven't done it consistently, but we have done it on a, on a spill, you know, on a, on a location popped up, at, you know, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP. On specific days. Yeah, on specific days. We did a site. We did a bracket. Okay, and with the nice here in Nick and USA yeah. 4 and state line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta Incorrect. basically flushed its sewage down the river. No, no sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. When I just, just like the gentleman here said, when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to Lab and Thomas will work with you and folks are going to say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posted on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and I say we haven't been out there and do it. And you ever returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You can file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data every 